Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Holistic Navigator podcast. You're listening to episode two, where we'll be discussing sleep and how to rest your best. I'm the producer of the show, Brian Strickland, and here's your host, Ed Jones. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Holistic Navigator podcast. I want to thank you so much for taking your time to listen today, and we hope that you'll find this information very valuable, useful, and practical because your health is your wealth. And we are living in a time of great confusion and stress involving why are so many people sick? And if they're not sick, if they're not diagnosed with something, they certainly are not living in an optimal uh, level of physical and emotional health. And, you know, in the old days, you were always told, well, let's go see the doctor. Well, for some reason, those kind of recommendations are not really solving our problems anymore unless you have something that is acutely obvious. And then, of course, they are treating you with their normal methods, which sometimes is very valuable, can be life-saving. I I don't want to ever get to a or give the impression that I'm all one-sided. I value mainstream medicines, uh, proper medications at the correct times, and the ability to patch the body together when it's been in some traumatic event or open an artery if you've had a blockage. You know, if I have a heart attack this afternoon, I don't want someone giving me an herb. I want uh, quick acting people who are very well trained and who can do things to help me get through the day because uh, the, the kind of acute situations that kill us can't really be addressed by things that I have built my life on. And, and I have built my life and career on believing that the human body was given the miraculous ability to heal practically everything that's wrong with it and maintain health as long as we give it what it needs and take away what's hurting it. But that's the million-dollar question. The things that are destroyed Destroying and hurting our health today is a hundred times more than what our great great grandparents were living through. And everything from the plastics to the chaotic nature of just even drinking water, if you really look into drinking water, it is a potential nightmare. And one thing many people don't realize is what do you think happens to all of your prescription drugs? that your next door neighbor is taking, the, the birth control pills, the antibiotics, uh, the autoimmune type of drugs. I mean, the average person in our state is taking 17 prescription drugs per year. And because I take none, that means a lot of people are taking more than that to come up with that average. Well, when you go to the bathroom, or those people do, and they urinate, it's going down into the municipal water system. And the water companies do the very best they can to prevent us from being sick with bacterial problems because that's how they clean the water, with chlorine and other processes. They don't filter these pharmaceuticals out. And so you're getting small amounts of someone's Valium and birth control pill and other, other, other. What do you think that does to the human body uh, when you have a plethora of pharmaceuticals all mixed together. Now, rightly so, it's in teeny amounts. But the problem is, if it's in every bit of water that you consume, uh, it will become a cumulative issue, and it will be one of the many variables that we have to recognize that is taking our health down. Now, today I'm going to talk about probably the most epidemic reason that we don't feel well, we're anxious, we many times get diseases, including cancer because of this, and it is chronic lack of sleep, insomnia. I mean, none of us who are living and breathing today has probably not experienced a period of time where you've struggled with sleep. And of course, the answer in the mainstream world is, which, again, during emergencies, they're great, and during chronic conditions, they're absolutely what I believe you should steer away from, because the way they want to address this issue is to pharmaceutically force your body into a sleep uh, mode. 
And the one thing I've learned over 40 years of studying with many individuals who are the old timers as far as respecting how and the function of the human body and the magic that it has to create health uh, is that we need to not use a Band-Aid approach. And what that means is if you force the body to do something and not look into the underlying reasons why the problem originally occurred, you, of course, are not fixing the original, say, leak uh, in your tire. If you have an automobile tire and it keeps leaking, you can patch it and patch it and patch it, and you can still drive down the road. But you know eventually that tire will explode because you can't just keep patching and you could be dead because you could have an accident because at 60 miles an hour, uh, it could be deadly. Well, the same holds true for continuing to patch the human body. And to give someone Ambien and other drugs that we already know decreases memory, uh, has the ability to create sleepwalking where people have no memory of what they did, The other biggest issue, though, is the brain chemistry gets wired for needing this drug after a period of about three months. And so you are in a position of, well, I couldn't sleep before, and the pill did help me what I felt like get into sleep, but now there's no hope for me to sleep unless I refill this prescription. And I deal with people constantly over the past decades who come to the point in their life where they understand the negative effects of using pharmaceuticals to patch the body. But they're stuck because the people who give you those drugs are very uh, not cooperative and really don't have the understanding to help you wean off because you can't just stop taking it, in my opinion. You have to do something to, again, you step back and look at what are the issues involved and why didn't I sleep to begin with? And that's why we do something now that's evolving called functional medicine or integrative medicine. And that is the coming wave of true healthcare professionals who will allow you to partner with them so that everyone can journey into almost a magnification of looking within you to see what was the real original problem and let's work to deal with that. And then the body starts working the way it was designed to be. Now, one issue with sleep is EMFs. And of course, that stands for electromagnetic fields. And EMFs are devastating much of our brain chemistry. And the reason it does that It's because there's a certain part of each cell that regulates the calcium that goes in and out of a cell. And we know with absolute certainty when your brain or your other cells are exposed to excessive levels of electromagnetic fields from your cell phone, from your microwave, your TV, the lamp that sits next to your bed, especially if you have a clock that's plugged in, uh, your your phone that is next to your bed, what's happening is it's causing this calcium through this voltage-regulating system to be excreted from the cell. Well, that sounds like not a bad thing because calcium seems to be, you know, important for many functions. But in this regard, because it's being done in a method that the body did not want to do. It was being forced to make EMFs, uh, or EMFs were forcing the calcium to shoot out of these cells. It is damaging the mitochondrial function of each cell. Now, to make it very easy to understand, the mitochondria is a part of the cell that produces energy. Well, energy is energy to do things, move around, and function, but it also, more importantly, Mitochondrial energy is what takes damaged cells, sick cells, uh, bodies that are infected. All the things that the body has to do each day to maintain itself is fueled by mitochondrial function. So it would be like taking your automobile on a long trip and only, you know, using half gasoline and maybe putting a little bit of water in it. Every time you stopped, you kept putting more and more of water in your tank. Well, you know eventually that engine's going to quit running. Well, mitochondrial dysfunction causes fast aging also. So people who uh, have damaged their mitochondria are 
like, just imagine you've seen pictures of men and women who are on meth. Look how much older they look than, I mean, sometimes they look 30 to 20 years older than they actually are. A 30-year-old can look 60. Well, the reason is because it damages the mitochondrial function. Smoking does it. Alcohol does it. Uh, many of the foods we eat will do that. Eating foods that are not plant-based as a, as a part of your diet will contribute to that. So the EMFs have to be addressed as far as sleep. And we, can, we will end up doing a whole show on EMFs, and we don't want to do that now. But this one point I must say, for sleep and your health, you must be five feet away at night when you sleep from all of your EMF appliances. And that means everything electrical must be moved away. Now, you know, I know many, many people, and I am also uh, admit that I have a great addiction to my cell phone, but when I go home, it is all the way across the room. And it's just something we have to do. But as far as getting back to the sleep, I want to recommend a book. This book is a life changer for people who have chronic insomnia. Because, you ha you know, if you are going to learn a new language, don't you think that you're going to probably have to go and either purchase very uh, uh, modern learning techniques from the software, you may have to go to classes, you go to groups, you're going to have to put in effort to learn how to speak this language. The same exact thing applies to every health condition that's chronic. Quit thinking that there's a quick fix. Because the quick fixes, if you want those, have a hefty price to pay because they didn't fix what was wrong with you. So if that's your belief system, then run to your doctor and get your sleeping pills and continue on, my friend. But the day will come that you will regret doing that if you live long enough. So there's a book called The Yoga of Sleep. And this gentleman is speaks a, a language about explaining the true... Uh, significant basic reasons why we have lost the rhythm of sleep, why the brain is not cooperating in the body, and takes you on a journey of really self-realization that you start seeing that we've done it all wrong for so long as far as thinking why we, you know, how do we solve these sleep issues? Now, I will admit I'm a chronic and have been a chronic insomniac since my daughter was born. I was one of the similar stories of, oh, I could sleep through a, a, a storm and had to check on her at night. When she was a baby, then I got over uh, stimulated by worry and fear that something was wrong. So every little noise that I heard in the house, I would stay on high alert. Well, that high alert didn't leave me after she grew up. And so I continued with this, you know, ability to go to sleep but the inability to stay in deep sleep. And the REM sleep, REM sleep, is where you are rebuilding and cleansing and nourishing the entire brain and body to prepare you for the next day of life. And when you don't get the deep sleep, these functions are critically uh, decreased. And with time, you start losing a sharp memory. You start losing your sex drive lack of interest in and, and, and inability to have as much joy. Uh, because when you're dragging around a 50-pound weight of fatigue every day, you, you know, even the most gorgeous sunrise and sunset tends to diminish itself from where you could be if you were fully refreshed. Uh, so there is a book lit that's free that we will have posted on the uh, podcast, the link for that, and I would encourage you to uh, go to that because what I want to talk about is the steps that we're going to advise you on to help you to get back to this rhythm of sleep. Now, I will recommend the Yoga of Sleep. You can purchase that through whatever methods you choose. I highly, highly recommend listening to the book and not reading it. There's something that was so much deeply moving when I heard his passion and his uh, explanation of so many of these issues. And here's one of the things that was life-changing for me. Somehow we've all gotten into this mindset, and one reason is because when, younger, when we were younger, this did happen. 
uh, we go to bed at night and let's say we go to bed at 10 o'clock and we wake up at six and then you get up and you do your thing. Well, the issue is that that won't usually continue uh, uninterrupted sleep. That is a myth. It comes with youthfulness and is not super practical as far as how we start aging. And when I say aging, 25 years old plus. And it's the issue is that we start getting into this vicious cycle of fear and worry. And the reason is because you've got a super busy day tomorrow and you got all these appointments and you go to bed at 930 and you want to get fully refreshed and then oops, here comes midnight, and you just got up, maybe you went to the bathroom, you come back to bed, and you start this, what we call cognitive popcorn. The brain starts planning and thinking and sometimes fearing, and what that creates in you and in all of us is that we are actually so worried about going back to sleep that you've doomed yourself with the inability to go back to sleep, or When you do finally get to sleep, it's the light, uh, not refreshing level of sleep. So the one thing in my life that I have finally learned is to come to peace with waking up. Because if you continue to fight that, it will doom you and you'll never be able to truly get back in the rhythm of sleep. And one of the things is I believe uh, in my own area of learning about life and health is that when you look at animals in the jungle and in any kind of nature setting, the predators who go out to start their journey of finding food for the next day for themselves or their young ones, many times that happens in uh, like two to three hours before the sun starts coming up. Well, we are still programmed, there's no doubt, on a deepest level to still kind of connect to this rhythm of jungle life, I guess I will say, in nature, and what we probably had to live through for tens of thousands of years. And so it's kind of wired into us to be alert, because this alertness is what kept us alive for all these thousands of years. So waking up is nothing to be uh, upset about or actually be worried or think something is wrong. When you wake up and you finally come to peace with the fact that you're going to wake up, then you can generally go back to sleep much easier. Now, I will say with the additional years that come with living, we have to, or I have had to use helpers. And these helpers are sometimes placebo-based. And so I have my little package of goodies that I have utilized over the years. So when I wake up, if I really start feeling the fear that I'm not going back to sleep, I'll take something. And the somethings, of course, as you know from the philosophy of this uh, holistic navigator, will be totally natural, totally drug-free, side-effect-free. Well, the number one recommendation that I always speak about is GABA, G-A-B-A. GABA in capsules can be miraculous for a vast majority of people. GABA is a brain neurotransmitter. If you had tons of GABA naturally in your uh, system, your fear level, your anxiousness level, your ability to be calm and cool would be the way it probably was when you were very much younger. It's what we want. It's this this ability to to kind of be resilient and to bounce back quickly. Well, many of us are drowning in a sea of fear and anxiousness from morning till night. And sometimes that is a a disturbance or in a balance of brain chemicals. Again, this is vicious cycle. The less you sleep, the less healthy your brain chemicals are. So let's help them. And taking 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of GABA is... uh, quite effective for helping get back into the balance of what we want, which is more balanced brain chemistry. Well, here's my my bullet point, though. You cannot do GABA at bedtime and expect it to make it work through the night. GABA's effects is generally approximately three hours. So what you want to do is you want to set your capsules out near your bed or near your bathroom with a cup of water. Because once you get up, once you go to the kitchen, you turn the light on, 
uh, you are probably doomed. It's going to then delay the going back to sleep significantly. Any lights that pop on that have any blue light spectrum, which all of your lights do, unless you happen to purchase the ones that don't have it, they're going to shut your melatonin production down. That is something we have to have adequate amounts or because that's what tells the human body, relax, it's all fine, let's go to sleep, uh, it's time to refresh. Well, that message, if it's cut off, is like all messages, and you don't hear it, well, you don't, you don't get any uh, action out of it, so, you know, things happen, which is the body thinks it's time to get up, time to go to work, time to do whatever. So making sure that you have your GABA ready when you wake up in the middle of the night, Secondly, making sure that any night lights or any other lights you have, uh, either you don't turn them on or you end up purchasing some lights that are uh, made specifically to not have blue light spectrum. And those are easy to find these days on the Internet. Uh, in fact, there's a website I, I used to love called lessemf.com, L-E-S-S-E-M-F.com, and I purchased several of my lights from that company. Uh, it's locally owned, and it's uh, they, the guy really knows what he's talking about. The other thing is, which is a radical idea that I came across several years ago f- from a uh, person who's named Dr. Buteko, a Russian physician, and I love Dr. Buteko's writings about how to s- breathe properly because uh, and that'll be a whole show another time I can assure you but the 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 big thing that he spoke about is when you sleep at night and you mouth breathe you have doomed yourself for many areas of health but one of those is what happens when you mouth breathe is you are creating imbalanced brain chemistry and you are probably encouraging sleep apnea. Now, sleep apnea is something that will devastate your health because what's happening is you're starting to lose the ability to maintain a uh, the kind of breathing that's necessary that allows for you to stay in the deep level of sleep. Because when you have sleep apnea and you get less oxygen, the body wants to wake up. But what happens is you're half waking up all night long. So you wake up finally at six in the morning exhausted and things like blood pressure can go up and depression can increase significantly uh, because of the devastating effects of this. And then people go around and they're wondering, why do they feel this way? They went to bed at nine o'clock and I got up at six. But the truth is you did not get to the level of sleep that nourishes your human system. And so my remedy uh, not my remedy. It was the remedy that Dr. Buteco came up, but I'm the only other person that I have seen that spoke of this for years is taping your mouth shut. I know it sounds very radical. Let me tell you, I have taped my mouth shut. Even now with a mustache, I'm still taping my mouth shut every single night. Now, you don't use regular scotch tape or duct tape Unless the person you're sleeping with you want to get rid of, then you could put duct tape all around their head, and then you could swear you were trying to help them, but they woke up dead. But uh, we probably don't need to do that. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, It is a special tape, and you can find it on Amazon, and you can probably find it at some drugstores, and it's a medical tape that costs about $5 for a roll. And you're going to take a tiny piece. When I say tiny piece, I'm talking maybe one-fourth an inch. And you will put it in the middle parts of your lips. You're not going to string it across your all your lips. In fact, you can still speak with this tape on because you can speak out the side of your mouth. If for any reason you got nauseous or you felt sickly during the night, it quickly comes off because it's not going to hurt your lips. It has just the right amount of glue and things on it. But what it will do, number one is... You're not going to wake up with dry mouth any longer. You're going to be your teeth will be far better because the drying out at night is is very caustic to your teeth and your enamel. But the big part is you will be able to get and stay in a deeper level of sleep by nose breathing. Now, I know a few people are going to say, "Oh, my nose is stopped up, you know, at night I can't breathe." You know, it's it's this weird catch 22. One reason your nose is stopped up because you are mouth breathing. 
believe it or not. And when you truly get relaxed in bed and your body starts uh, feeling comfortable with not breathing through your mouth again, the nose opens up. Now, it won't if you have a terrible cold, terrible sinus, or the flu. Of course not. But anything other than that, it will end up relaxing the nasal passages. Do you know that the majority of animals... If they have an accident and their nose is crushed where there is no way for that animal to breathe, other than just a handful of animals, most will pass away within 30 days. A zebra all the way down the list. Now, a dog and cat won't, but uh, many of the animals will. It shows you the devastation of mouth breathing. And the reason it does this is because it changes the ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide. And that's a whole story that we will do one day with Dr. Buteco's breathing technique. So the other thing is temperature. You cannot sleep deeply if your room is too warm. And during the summer, uh, I would encourage you to not be so caught up on saving a few dollars and go ahead and turn your thermostat down to at least 70 degrees and perhaps down to 68 if you're willing to do it. And, of course, in the winter, that makes it very, very easy. And that will allow you to get to that other level of sleep, uh, potentially, along with all the other things we are talking about. Now, you know, there's very common sense things that I'm not even going to speak about, like you don't drink coffee before you go to bed. Alcohol, you know, some people, it hurts their sleep terribly. Some, it hurts their sleep less. It all depends on the person. Not drinking excessively, you know, after four o'clock or five is very important to keep the urination down. And one thing about urination, many times we tend to end up having a weaker bladder as we age. Uh, reserving your bed for mainly sleep. We're not going to use our bed for constant TV watching. We're not going to watch, you know, have the bed for, you know, just reading and, and, and just lounging. That is where your other couch and your other parts of the house should be uh, reserved for because you need to mentally, emotionally be connected to the fact that your bed is an entry point for you to journey into another spectrum of your life. There's an analogy that I heard years ago that I really felt very uh, uh, connected to. If you think about Disney, the Disney park, just imagine how much business they do during the day. Now, when they shut down at night, imagine the amount of people and crews and trucks that come in to clean up all of the garbage and the trash and the waste and sweep the street. Well, when you sleep at night, we know for a fact that the garbage trucks within us go into your brain to remove all of the toxic chemicals that the brain has accumulated during the day. The brain does not detox like other organs of the body during the day. It only does it during good, deep sleep. And so imagine the Disney park, if only half the people came to work for weeks or months or even decades like some people have with the epidemic of insomnia. You can imagine the backlog of toxins that are soaking your brain chemicals. And it may take months to rebuild the deficit of lack of sleep for many of us. There is a myth that you can't uh, sleep extra amounts to put it in the bank. Uh, if you think that you're going to lose sleep for five nights in a row significantly and make it up on weekends, no, you're not. It's not going to be advantageous. It's not fixing the damage that you did by the five bad nights. I want you all to know uh, and not negate the value of deep sleep. Uh, I almost, and I have told people this before, I, it's all such a balancing act with the big puzzle of health. You know, you've got parts of the puzzle, like, of course, the food you eat, the exercise you do, the sleep we get or don't get, the supplements we take, the, uh, the drugs we do or don't take. You know, then you've got another puzzle, which is, okay, if we're going to eat healthy, like, do what is healthy? What are foods that are, you know, that I should be doing that work with my body. So it's it's certainly not an exact science, but we have to, to delve into this or else, unless you're genetically blessed, you will suffer increasingly as the years go on. We tend to think of sleep and wakefulness as the two entities of what we consist of. Well, we really don't. We have levels of wakefulness and we have levels of sleep. 
And you don't go from totally awake and now I want to be totally asleep in eight minutes. It's kind of like the analogy of when you pull your car into your carport at night, do you drive at 30 miles an hour down your driveway and then slam the brakes on at the very last second? No, you start a slowing process before you even get into your driveway, and then you slow it further as you pull up to your garage door, and then you creep into the garage. This is how sleep works. So about two hours before you plan on having your head on the pillow, You start this slowing process. That means you actually don't expose yourself to any bright lights. You have dimmer lights. You don't have loud noises. You you don't have rock and roll and, and scary movies and things that are, you know, upsetting to you, whether it be the politics of the day or the the tragedies uh, that are on the mainstream news. You really try to be kinder to your spirit and soul because it's the time that it needs to start changing the level of wakefulness. And that is what opens the door for so much better quality sleep, because then, again, the level of sleep is not a, a off and on button. It is a process of getting into the, the different levels. And one of the parts of our rejuvenation comes with the REM sleep, which often, often only comes in the last two hours after you have slept about five and a half hours. So these people who say, oh, I can get by with six hours, they're getting very little of this uh, REM sleep, which is, of course, again, the garbage trucks going into the brain to remove the toxins. And so that last two hours is vitally important. And the truth is, some days, no matter what you do, you are going to have a rough night's sleep. And it's just the fact of of living in a human body that is quite complex, and there's so many variables that we can't control, you know, but we adapt. We, we, we want to create a system where we are resilient and that uh, you're going to bounce back. I've been watching people for 40 years, listening intently to how people have made decisions as to every aspect of their health. And you can't learn everything in school, but you can learn a whole lot if you can just be an astute observer. Thank you again for listening. This is Ed Jones with The Holistic Navigator. Thanks for listening to The Holistic Navigator podcast, where we believe the body has the ability to heal itself. For more information, please visit www.theholisticnavigator.com.